Hi, in this video I will show you how to use the track to mesh. So in short, it will create the guide mesh. And for example, if I go to edit mode and move this guide mesh, it will affect the haze trans. Haze trans will follow this guide mesh. So first I will show you a simple example how to use this. And then we will create this hairstyle using this technique. Before I show you how to use the track to mesh, I will just quickly show you why it is cool. So uh, from the hair library, I will append the scalp preset. And now I will add the track to mesh using Ctrl Shift H. Ctrl Shift H hair with track mesh. Initial offset is OK. So now we do not have enough strands, only two. I will go to the hair system, strand generation, bump up density to 22,000. And now if I move the guide mesh, you see the strands are following this guide mesh. I will go into edit mode, cut edge, maybe this one using Viki. So now if I move the left side slightly to the left like this and move the right side slightly to the right like that, you see we just created hairstyle with split uh, very quickly and uh, easily. So that's why I like this uh, technique. It is good for lazy people. And let's now go with simple mesh. I will use Shift A grid mesh and I will explain how this works on uh, this plane. Using Ctrl Shift H again, I will add hair with track mesh. Initial offset, I will bump this up to 0, 0.5 meter. And OK, again, we have this guide mesh. You can move it and it will, the strands will follow it. Uh, maybe I will increase slightly the width of the profile and switch to the solid view so it is easier to see what is going on. Uh, OK, so the idea behind this uh, track to mesh is that uh, you just uh, move uh, this uh, guide mesh and uh, basically work uh, without sculpting the hair, but you, instead you sculpt this guide mesh. And uh, I wanted to show you also what happens in the background when I pressed the when I pressed the Ctrl Shift H hair with track mesh. So what this operation is doing in the background, it will uh, duplicate the selected mesh. Uh, into, it won't move the mesh, but I will move it up so it is clearly visible what is going on. And uh, this operation will also switch the display mode to wire with all edges enabled. So uh, also this operation will add the strand generator with the track to mesh deformer and the track to mesh deformer will be uh, using target object, the copy we just created. So on top of that, right now if I move the guide mesh, we have this behavior. So the operation will also use the bind to track mesh. So now we have this behavior. And uh, lastly, it will also add the shape keys. So it will create one shape key, then it will add the second shape key. And the idea behind those shape keys is that if you move and deform your mesh uh, too much, like it is twistlet and manglet like that, it may be hard to untwist. So you just can remove the broken shape key like that and continue working maybe with the new setup and comp a new hairstyle in a non-destructive way on the shape key. Okay, so I explained how, how this uh, works. So I will remove and reset the setup, use again hair with track mesh. So you see with just, with just one click, uh, I can do those operations. So it is saving quite, uh, quite uh, lots of clicks. OK, so maybe I will work without the shape key to make it less confusing. And uh, let's move the guide mesh like so. And I will jump to the track to mesh uh, settings. So the bind, unbind. Uh, basically, without when I have the state, the unbinded, unbinded state, when I move the vertices, uh, I think I think I am at binded state, so I will unbind. So when I am not binded, you see the strands are moving and sliding around instead of being glued to the surface. So just watch those three tips. You see they are not moving at all and they are not glued to target mesh. Uh, and for example, in uh, this spot, you have a bunch of strands following uh, this edge. Why is that? Well, uh, this is because 
uh, let's imagine each strand has its root and this root is searching for closest point on the target uh, mesh or on the guide mesh and they all those strands based on the root position they found out closest point to be in this spot so the idea is just make this plane kind of close and evenly this uh, evenly position it so that all the strands will have a nice uniform distribution and this is good position for the binding um, this is mostly done automatically so uh, i am just explaining how the binding works okay so now the points are sliding around and as soon as you click the bind now just watch maybe those three tips you see when i move the guide those three tips are moved to the to the right so now the, now they are glued and following the deformation on the on the guide mesh correctly okay so let's go to the other settings there is the separate target per island uh, we are now the head system is attached to the plane the grid and this grid is made from one mesh island let's say i will rip this edge like so now you see only left island strands from the left island are following the guide mesh uh, why it's so and why it is now switching when i move the guide mesh well the idea is if i show you the origins this is the origin of the guide mesh and because the origin is closer to the left island that's why the strands only from left island is uh, affected if i move the origin closer to the right island you see as soon as uh, i moved the origin past this uh, split line now the strands on the right island are affected and uh, this button is basically disabling separate target per island now all of the strands from both islands are flowing flowing the same target so why there is this button at all well basically if i for example duplicate the guide mesh i could add another track to the former and in the new track to the former pick the duplicated grid and the idea was you could this way create hairstyle with split however i think i found a better and easier way but still it in some cases maybe it can be useful if you just split the base mesh then in theory you could use this technique for guiding different parts of different clumps of strands to different guide mesh for now i will remove the setup remove the second track to disable separate mesh for island and let's continue with the explanation there is the linear to end factor if i set this to zero all strands will be straight and then there is the mask input if i set this to zero then the tracking won't uh, be uh, enabled you can mask this basically input with for example vertex group or randomized input mask so now some strands are following the guide mesh some are ignoring the guide mesh influence range when i adjust this it will slide the points all along the strand usually keep it around 0, 06 0, 07 the band strand basically imagine uh, we have the normal from the surface and uh, uh, root the normal is going in this direction and on top of that we have root play position and the tip position and this normal is generating a third point and this third point is kind of determining the shape of the bending of the strand and the slider bend strand is basically moving this extra point uh, up out of the surface or closer to the surface so when uh, the bend strand is very low that third point is kind of close to the root and that's why we have almost straight strand like that uh, okay so i will increase the bend strand then there is the use surface normal it is useful if you have real geometry strands uh, quickly maybe i will explain how to how this works so the setup now is broken on the duplicated copy to break, unbreak this i will make the setup on the right unique by pressing this icon 2 
and I will uh, pick different guide. So I will pick the new guide like that. And okay, so idea is I want to explain the use surface normal, what it is doing. For it to work, I will have to convert those strands to real geometry. However, we are now on the mesh. Hedge system is attached to mesh. I have to move this to curve. Control Shift H transfer hedge system to empty curve. Now we, we are on the curve object. However, the curve has no geometry. In edit mode, you see we have zero vertices on the curves. So I will use this uh, hair system, maybe without the track mesh. I will bake the hair system into real geometry using bake, bake active subsystem. So now if I go to edit mode, we have those strands. Uh, I will comb them quickly uh, like that with the combo brush those parts to the left, those parts to the right. And OK, now I will add the track to uh, the former on top of those strands. However, I do not want to generate new strands, so I will select strands filter and add track to mesh. OK, and I will pick the guide mesh and, and I have to press, I think, uh, disable separate target per island. Uh, bind this and okay now let's see the influence if something is changing when I press this button and you see in the place where I combat the strands to the right now they are bending uh, kind of this way so uh, basically instead of using surface normal for determining the third point on for bending now they are using the direction of the strands uh, from the tangent position. So the same is true on the left. Let's say the tangent is going this way. And if I enable track to guide, th this is why those strands are bending to the left, because the tangent on those uh, is going to the left. Uh, so yeah, if you want to have more control basically on the direction in which the strands are bending then you could use this uh, the use this use disable surface normal uh, okay i do not see the source mesh i will go to profile others and enable draft source mesh now we see the source mesh and let's go with the other settings mean distance bend if i set this to zero the shortest strands will be straightened if I set to zero max distance bend, now the longest strands will be straightened. In some cases, it can help with reducing of the intersections of hair cards. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this will be visible in this setup because this is uh, too simple. And okay, I think I showed you also all the settings, and uh, maybe the last option I wanted to show is a easier way of creating hair with split without having to use two, uh, two, two track to mesh deformers and two uh, track to objects. So I will unbind the strands from the target. I will select the target, rotate like so, and let's bind at this position, at this orientation. So what happens at, when you bind is that those strands are kind of being now glued to the surface and we can use this as advantage. So if I go to edit mode for the target mesh, I'll right click on the edge and V to rip this edge. Now you see that the strands that were glued to the right side, now they will follow to the right. And the same is true for the left side. So basically, the position of the ripped edge will uh, determine where the position of the hair split will be. So it is important to understand how it works, but it is uh, usually quite simple. You just select the uh, mesh, the target mesh, rip this like so, move those strands, and they will follow uh, the position at which they were banded. And it does not matter, the split at the base mesh does not matter because we are not using the separate target per island. Okay, so now let's model the hairstyle on this character. Okay, so I will remove the old hair 
old guide mesh and old scalp and from the hair library subcomponents I will append the scalp preset just press append you will see the scalp in your scene by default it is rendered in wireframe mode and uh, it has this shrink wrap modifier you can uh, click on this pick icon and pick your character to shrink wrap to your character in my case i disabled selection of the character so instead i will just pick the character from the list and uh, let's switch to the solid mode we have some issues in here and in here i will uh, tap into edit mode with soft selection enabled connected only symmetry enabled and without topology mirror i will now alt right click on the edge around the ear then grab with g z to move it up like that then grab x x like that maybe slightly more now this looks kind of clear uh, i will also move this loop so alt right click get cheesy to move it up maybe move this part using gz and i think the rest should be taken care of by shrink wrap it looks okay maybe i will select this part go to the side view and move this slightly backwards uh, so uh, the height line will be slightly higher okay let's see this looks okay so i'll apply the shrink wrap and uh, in the edit mode i do not like uh, this place i will go in the bottom i have the volume smoothing plugin if you want you can uh, buy this or in the second i will show you manual way to fix this uh, so i will just smooth those verts and uh, if you wanted to do this manually you could just select the vertices w smooth them like that but i have more control in my opinion using this brush okay so let's add the hair go to the object mode shift Control shift h hair with track mesh and in the initial offset if you do not see the this just press f9 and i will in my case reduce the initial offset twice and press ok and okay this looks uh, not great but it is because the character head is very small so it is generating only one strand with a way too big profile radius uh, so some people are confused that how it, why it is looking uh, so bad but if i grab the guide mesh then you see the strand actually is following correctly except the strand the city is way too small so first i will tweak the profile section go to the profile reduce the profile in my case 10 times so now it is not as wide then in the deformer strand generator i will want to switch to the Poison disk distribution bump up density to 22000 and uh, i will increase spacing to 001 and now let's go to the guide mesh so i will select the guide mesh and to make it easier to see in the strands i will enable the in the overlays i will enable draft x-ray and uh, basically i want to create a split at on uh, this edge so uh, uh, i will uh, select uh, this edge press v to rip and now this is made from two meshes uh, to, so on top of that i will use mira tour linear deformer move one side to the to the bottom to the left and then i will move the other side i will move this slightly up and slightly to the right side like that and uh, the rest of this i will continue just by manually combing in sculpt mode i can leave the link to this uh, mira tool add-on in the description if you want so let's jump to the sculpt mode and the best brush in the sculpt mode is the notch brush so if i comb using the notch brush we we'll maybe reduce the strength it will look like combing of the real hair cards uh, so i will check the other side since the mesh is not no longer symmetrical it seems that symmetry is not working the best so we we'll just disable symmetry and comb this quickly like so so i you would probably do not want any place to have the 
uh, strands going straight up or you will see very clearly the strands geometry so the trick is for good looking hairstyle to make it uh, kind of bend and uh, slightly move along the surface so it is not so it is not just going straight up and in my case I want uh, the hair split line to be here so I will comp some strands to the bottom and some strands will move to the right like that uh, by accident I switched brush so let's go back to the NAR brush maybe increase slightly the strength and uh, okay so now I will probably want to switch I will want to switch to different brush so we switch to grab a brush pressing G then maybe F to increase size and move it like so so it is a bit hard to see the guide mesh so again I will enable graphics ray but this time with shift click I will enable sculpt mode and now we see better the guide mesh maybe it is too strong so I will reduce the face opacity and edge opacity like that in edit mode I will deselect everything and now let's go so using a grab brush I am just slightly moving all the strands I do not want to move them too far away or the mesh uh, can be deformed uh, too much and not we may lose the even distribution but don't worry even if you mess up this guide mesh everything is done all on this shape key so you can at any time remove this shape key create new one and comp the hairstyle again okay so i think this is mostly looking okay uh, so I want to maybe add a bit width in here and a bit of width in here. I will move this. Maybe I will switch actually now to the draft brush, smaller strength, and I will comp. I will comp this to add some bit of volume like that, and I want this part to be higher. So using the draft brush, we have something like that and in the back it is uh, too close to the head so using the draft brush with big radius I will also push the guide mesh outside of the outside of the head then switch to grab a brush and I think I think mostly this should uh, do the job We can tweak this uh, later so for now let's say it is working uh, good enough and i will go back to object mode select the guide cards the idea i have is my, in mind is that those strands will not be actually rendered but i will add child system and use those strands as a clamp target for the child system but for now i want to add a noise deformer to break the even look so let's add the noise right now and we see no effect of the noise it is because the noise is then followed by the track to scalp deformer and track to scalp is basically overriding the old all of the formation from the strands that were before it so now we have noise then the track is overriding the noise so that's why we have to move the noise behind and below the track to mesh and this is the default how the noise looks this parameter always tweak the global scale for small object reduce global scale and maybe even slightly more now let's uh, bump up let's adjust the amplitude uniform amplitude and per strand amplitude maybe on top of that i will add the taper using reduce set deformer and let's continue working uh, so what I want to get, I want this kind of flowy S-like shape for those strands. Maybe they are slightly too short, so I will go back to the guide mesh and I will increase length by going to the edit mode, then selecting with soft selection the top part 
with soft selection enabled, connected only without symmetry in this case. I will move maybe around from this to this. And like in this edge, I will move everything down. So basically, I want kind of longer strands in this area. And let's say it is working uh, good enough. So as I can, as you can see, you can uh, move the guide mesh in uh, sculpt mode or in the edit mode. It does not really matter. So if you prefer one over the other, then just pick your best tool for the task. And in here, actually, I will select this part and this part and move this slightly down. Okay, uh, let's go back to the hair system object and tweak the noise. So I wanted this S-like shape. We kind of have something like that, but not strong enough. So we will bump up the noise, maybe increase the frequency. Now it is way too big. Okay, so there is something uh, happening, but the noise I like in here, this shape, but the, the noise is too strong for the side. And what I will do, I will mask the noise using the length mask. So now the shorter the strand, the length no less noise it will, has, it will have because of this minimum value. So the shortest strands will get zero noise right now. And now, thanks to this, uh, it is not so wavy on the sides. And it is still wavy on the top. And uh, maybe I will repeat the same. Let's bump up uniform noise maybe to non-zero value. And maybe I will repeat the same. Use length mask to mask the uniform amplitude. And for now, I think it will work quite okay. Let's see how this would look in the material view. Not the best, but as I said, uh, we will add the child system, so most of this will be covered anyway. In the, end, I, in the end, I may completely hide those strands from the current system. So let's na name the current system as the parent. I will uh, add a tag P to this system. Let's add the child system. So I will add strand generation. Uh, I will na name this sub clamp. In the parent column, I will change parent to use p tag, and uh, we do not see change in the head system on the object. Let's bump up density. So this time I want uh, even higher density, but let's switch to the Poison disk sampling. Let's bump up density to 40,000, and uh, still we do not see the strands. It is because they have no UV, so they are generated. I just have to add the UV region set. And now they are set. When we are on the UV region, I will manually pick the regions I want to use. So click on this button, and in my case, I want to pick those two UV regions. If you do not see all of those UV boxes and you see only the box on the right, then you can go to UV image editor and in here load the hair strip depth texture. This is the default hair tool texture, and I just used those regions with this more semi transparent part on the texture. You can go and with middle mouse button scroll to the top header bar, then click on the hair UV. And if you do not see all those UV boxes, then just right click and drag to define new UV boxes. And then just click, click enter to save. In my case, I will cancel. Okay, and uh, I picked the two UV regions in the center. Now I will add the clamp on top. Uh, also, before that, maybe I wanted to uh, tell you uh, that uh, and notice that uh, the child system is already apparent. It is because it is in inheriting properties like tilt and uh, radius from parent strands. This is automatically done in uh, geometry nodes. So if you like it, then if you don't like it, you can still override this. So for example, you could add radius set and then disable uh, tapering and disable build up and switch influence to zero. Okay, and now we have no taper. So this build up, uh, with this build up disabled, we will basically ignore the current radius and use the constant value of radius. But I actually, I actually like the taper from the parent strands. They look good on the child system. 
So I will go with that. And let's add the clamp deformer and uh, this is the result we get. So looking kind of nice. Maybe those strands are a bit uh, straight again. So let's go back to the parent system and add more waviness. Uh, maybe increasing the frequency even more. Something like that. So yeah, this is kind of some, some waviness is there. As you can see, so looking uh, decent. And uh, okay, let's continue with this. <clears throat> Maybe I will taper those strands slightly more by increasing the influence range. And uh, what I want to do now, I think that some strands are moved uh, inside the head too much. It is because sometimes the noise will move the strand outside, sometimes it will move the strand inside the head. So to fix that, after noise, I will add the push out the former. Uh, so yeah, this pushed out all the strands before and after. And I do not like the push out on the sides. So again, I will mask this input of push out value with length mask. So without the length mask, with length mask. So definitely now we only are mostly affecting the top part. So I could maybe even increase this slightly. And let's see, I do not, I would like to get a shape like this. So actually I will go to the guide mesh, move the front part like that. And yes, I think I like, like this behavior more. Now I can see there is some ugly twisting happening. It will be easier to see in the solid mode. To fix that, there is option in the align tilt. So uh, in the first system, Align tilt, there is the twist fix, so this uh, handles uh, and uh, untwists those strands. And automatically the second system is inheriting the tilt from the parent. Uh, okay, so that is fixed. Let's see how this would look without align tilt. So uh, I do not like those strands not being completely aligned. Uh, let's see what we can do about this. If we go to subsystem and let's add tilt align to the subsystem will it look better yes i think it is looking better so let's remove align tilt from the parent since this is not looking good in any way and now we can see those strands are not aligned those are probably my best guess the strands from the parent system so what i want to do i want to remove them uh, so in the subclums strand generation in the parent section, I will select remove parent strands. So now we are seeing only the strands from the second system. And I think I forgot to enable twist fix on the child system. So now we have way better, in my opinion, alignment and uh, no longer issue of those strands uh, going in this direction. Now they are go in this direction. Uh, what I like to do also is to change this profile from flat to make it slightly like uh, curved bent in, bent out. So I will go to the profile, increase the profile resolution. So visually not much change, but before that profile was just uh, head kite like this. And when I increased the resolution, we got extra resolution in the middle. So now I will increase the roundness and this will make the profile rounder, rounder like this, like barrel. Uh, okay, so let's uh, disable the profile panel, see the texture, material view. And okay, the next step for me would be, I do not want to get uniform distribution of the clamps everywhere. I would like to get bigger clamps on top and uh, smaller clamps in the bottom. This can be driven by the amount of the parent strands. So in the strand generation, in here there is the density factor. We can use this with mask this with vertex group and uh, first we have to create this vertex group. So uh, if I go to weight paint mode right now and uh, try to paint the weights, it is uh, not showing the weights. And this is kind of annoying, but you have to go to the modifiers, disable all of the modifiers. Now we can see the base mesh and uh, actually I will disable the character and switch to the solid view. So now we see the weights 
and instead of painting them manually we will uh, use the uh, gradient tool like that it is uh, one add-on called the vertex master and this is free add-on so if you want you can, i can also give you a link and i want gradient like that and we will use this gradient to mask the density of the parent strands i will unhide the character then enable back the modifiers switch to material view and in the field system strand generation density factor use the vertex group and let's plug in the group okay so let's uh, look how this looks bef before vertex group with vertex group so the effect is there except it is inverted and uh, this makes sense since uh, vertex group is zero in here one in here so we removed a bunch of strands uh, apparent strands in the back i want to invert this effect so just click this invert button and uh, now it is working as expected except we removed way too much too many parent strands from the top so i will compensate that by adding the offset gain input mask after the vertex group and i can increase the mask value by just increasing this offset so thanks to this now this was probably around zero before adding offset gain now now the value of the mask is zero free so a bunch of strands are uh, generated and uh, maybe they are still too big so we increase the we increase the vertex weight even more yeah and i think that i like this result we have a bunch of bigger clumps on the top and a bunch of uh, smaller in the back thanks to the gradient mask uh, i will tweak maybe the radius after all now the second the next thing let's see how it would look if i maybe bump up strand resolution because we may have not enough points to get this wavy behavior and uh, maybe it looks slightly better slightly more wavier okay so now the clamping is kind of too uniform to my taste so i will go to the subclamps and in the clamp i will add let's say maybe how it would look if we added vertex group on top the same vertex group that was used for density control on the parent so now we have this effect where uh, this is more uniform so i kind of like this behavior but on top of that i may want to randomize a bit of this effect so let's add the randomize and yes i think it is looking better let's see if i increase randomization and maybe on top of that i will add uh, offset again so i definitely look this is looking more organic not like uh, scales from lizard but kind of softer but on, to on top of that uh, this is maybe now too soft so we lost uh, the detail so before randomize after randomize we want to restore a bit of the original shape of uh, the clamps so i will use offset gain and increase gain does it it is not helping much let's add offset let's bump up gain even more uh, so yes it's, it is kind of working we have a bit, bit of those original clamps visible in here it restored a bit of clamps in here so it may be a matter of tweaking now or changing the order of the deformers so i will play with the settings until i will find something that i like maybe i will reduce the randomization range actually and let's bump up gain even more uh, basically what big gain uh, is doing it is making the strands uh, kind of behave in a binary way so it will completely ignore the clamp effect or it will 100 percent follow the parent so with high gain values you have kind of this effect and i think it is looking kind of better especially like in here it is way softer and let's see with how it would look without 
all those modifiers. So this is kind of looking like scales on the lizard, and this is kind of giving more fly away strands and uh, better result. And uh, I will jump back to the guide mesh, maybe move this slightly down, move this slightly to the back. I am basically stylizing, uh, stylizing the hair look. And this is very easy now, since uh, you can just control the guide mesh. And if I wanted, I could make this even non more non-destructive. So, for example, as you remember, the guide mesh has this shape keys. I could add quickly one more, maybe test shape key, set this to one. And now if I go to edit mode, unfortunately, it reverted back to the default base shape. But use this option in here. Uh, this is called shape key edit mode. So what it does, it will allow you to see all the shape keys. Uh, that, uh, that are non zero. So now we see the default deformer shape key. Now I enabled the test shape key. Currently we have no deformation yet in here, but let's say I want to test how it would look with uh, this kind of setup. And since this is on each uh, on the separate shape key, you can uh, tweak the look of the guide mesh like that non destructively. So just I wanted to show you this. For now, I will remove this test shape key. Let's continue working uh, on the simpler setup. So maybe I will move this slightly up like that. And uh, maybe let's see how it would look if I go to the parent system, uh, track to mesh and play with, the, with some settings in here. Let's maybe reduce mean distance bend factor so that now the shorter strands are going in a straight fashion rather than bending. So, so there is some change, not too, be, not too much, not sure if this is any better, but uh, usually I would say the shorter the strands, the less bending there should be. So that's why it may be slightly better, I think. And let's see if I increase bend factor. Yes, I think I like this more when it is bending a bit more like that. I could change the bend strength like that. And uh, we could try to maybe tweak the parents distribution. So we'll go to the strand generator. Let's see how it would look if I change the seed. Uh, because right now we had something like this uh, big strand in here, big strand in here. I would rather have uh, some distribution more like more like this. So we, if we are happy, we will randomly pick parent strands that will be better looking spacing. So for example, uh, this already looks uh, kind of better. We have one clump in here, one in here, one smaller here. So if I like the distribution, then I will just copy the seed value and then play a bit more with the seed. And if I won't find anything better, then I can just paste the old seed that I like it. So let's compare this 24, 24 to 15. So yeah, I like 24 more. Okay, and for now, let's say it is good enough. We can do the same on the noise. For example, we can change the seed on per strand. Default is now one. Let's see if we find a better distribution of noise. Uh, nothing that looks uh, spectacularly better. Uh, this one I think is kind of nice. I like the speculars in here. So yeah, if you like the seed, you can then copy find maybe another seed, but let's say, in my opinion, this looks uh, good enough and uh, there is one last issue that I can see and other than that, I would say this we are done with this hairstyle. So one issue is currently I created the first system. The first system is using the track mesh. Like currently it is hard to see this track mesh, so I will enable the draft X-ray in object mode and increase the face opacity. 
Okay, so we have this guide mesh, and uh, because I split this guide mesh uh, in this position, so now we have this split line, and here from the first system is following this split line. However, the second, the second system is not using this track to mesh. It is using first system as parent. So the problem right now is on the second system. Let's say the strand will be generated around uh, here. And now it is searching for two, two parents or a few parents, depending on the setting in here. So it is searching for four parents. So it will find maybe one parent on the one side, one parent on the other side. So it will not be interpreted nicely and won't go with the flow, so to say. And uh, the fix is for the second subsystem to use a split you would have to go into edit mode on the scalp mesh. This is the scalp mesh is the same mesh from which the hair system is attached to. So I will select this edge. Maybe enable traffic X-ray again. And okay, lots of clicking. So I want to rip this edge, and this ripping this edge will help with the second system. So I have ripped this edge. Now this is one part. This is another part. Uh, there is one issue with the side of on the side easy to fix go to the parent track to mesh and disable separate targets per island so and hopefully if i enable chat system so yeah I, in my opinion it is way better looking because now all the child child strands that landed on the left island are now only going to the parents on the left island and all the strands from the second system that landed on the right side are now only going to the parents that are on the right island. So this is one way, this is the last thing I wanted to fix. Uh, lastly, after align tilt, sometimes I like to add the tilt align to mesh border. And now it kind of helped somewhat in here even uh, to align the tilt even more to this uh, speed line. So it kind of it help it, but I do not like, actually it is looking quite okay, but uh, I do not uh, like the, to leave this uh, affecting all the strands. Uh, so I will, what I will do, I will change the affected distance to around zero one, and the affected distance it is making so that Let's say we have a bunch of uh, strands generated on scalp, and scalp line is going like that, the border edge. So uh, affected distance it is making so that only strands that are close to the border will be affected, and strands that are more deeper inside the mesh won't be affected. Uh, so now let's see how this looks with the affected distance. So you see now only we see the difference on the strands that are close to the border of the mesh. And I'm not sure if this is better, but I just wanted to show you that it is uh, option. I forgot to talk about the optimization of the poly count. So the quick first step would be to go to the profile section and in the profile others, there is the simplify button. Let's maybe isolate the hair using shift H and we see the active current object has um, 53,000 trees. I will enable simplify and it, it went down uh, by 10,000. The idea is maybe in the solid view it will be easier to see. We assign the mean point count to the shortest strands and we assign the maximum point count to the longest strands. So let's see if I reduce the mean point count to around uh, one. This is looking quite okay. Let's reduce the point count on the longest strands now. Six is okay. First is maybe a bit much. So let's go with this setup. And now we went down to 52,000 trees from, 40, from 50. The next step would be to optimize the density of the strands. Uh, so we do not usually need as, as many strands in the back of the character as in the front. So I will use just vertex group I created earlier in the second system, strand generation, in the strand distribution section, just mask the density factor with the vertex group. And uh, if I disable the vertex group, we have more strands in the back. If I enable this vertex group, we removed a bunch of strands from the back. Let's see the polycount now. 
we are on the 22,000, so more than twice the optimization. Uh, the one downside is that uh, we, you can see some bad spots now through the head. Uh, usually you would just paint the character head in black on the scalp area to hide those spots. Uh, lastly, in this, uh, in this case I forgot to use the personal disk sampling uh, the distance uh, parameter. So now we are just using random noise and because of that we do not have uh, that even distribution of strands. So in some spots you may get clumps of strands and then in some spots you may get just only few strands. Let's even out the distribution first by bumping up the density. So I will bump this up a few times, maybe even to 1060, so four times. Now it will be way denser, but I will now increase spacing. And uh, now it is looking quite good. Let's increase spacing even more. So basically I am increasing spacing until I will find out that we have too many bold spots. So maybe increase this even more. So now I would say this kind of on the boundary, like in some places, this is too much. Maybe reduce this spacing slightly. And now it's just a matter of playing with the parameters. Maybe actually changing seed can help too. And yes, I would say now it is quite optimal. Not as many bold spots. Just paint the character back in the in the darker color. And let's see the poly count. So we went down to around 20,000 from the 50,000 in the beginning. So this is the way I would optimize the polycount. Uh, hope you like this uh, video and see you.